Harrison and Alfie going around exploring East Anglian places, telling the history of places you know will bring joy to your faces. Essex and Norfolk, you can stuff it, it's Harrison and Alfie, silly Suffolk. Oi, you're eat bar. Doves. <laughs> That's oh, magical. Whoa. Uh, Welcome back to Silly Suffolk, episode three! Woohoo! In the last episode, we questioned the name of the village of Erwerton, sometimes being spelt with an A. This E and A spelling conundrum was solved for us a few weeks ago when we spoke to a nice lady mopping in the Erwerton church. We can now sleep worry-free knowing that the village itself is called Erwerton. But many years ago, the parishes changed the name to Arwerton as to get to the top of the alphabetical market list. So this E and A spelling mix-up was just a scandalous cheat to get fresher bread. Meanwhile, Wolverston, at the bottom of the alphabetical list, were likely seething with anger at the time. Harrison, it's all well and good, but this isn't the Shotley Peninsula episode. Oh, well, Alpha, my friend, I'm glad you brought this up. I'm not your friend. Today we're doing Hadley and the Wool Town. Oh boy! <laughs> The wool towns include Hadley, a perfect example of a beautiful wool town with the best high street in the world. Lavenham, home of Godric's Hollow from Harry Potter and lots of other timber buildings. Sudbury, home of Thomas Gainsborough. Bilderston, where the entire village moved to sell more cloth, deserting the church which now stands alone. Long Melford, which has the longest high street in Suffolk. A little place called Ipswich. And Kersey, which in contrast to Ipswich, is absolutely beautiful. Cavendish, where Suffolk pink houses can be found. Apparently Suffolk is famous for pink houses for some reason. And Clare, which is the smallest town in Suffolk and rhymes with chair. Boxford, where a Ford crossed the box. Makes sense. And Stratford, where a Ford crossed the store, not the Strat, which doesn't make sense. And Stoke, which happens to be by Nayland. But where did the wall towns come from? Harrison, are you going to tell me, you blithering walnut? No. In the mid-1400s, an influx of weavers from Flanders and Belgium settled in South Suffolk following the Hundred Years' War. All the wool from the excessive amount of sheep in Suffolk was soon turned into cloth by these weavers. Everybody wanted in on the fun, and so these market towns became filthy, stinking rich. Oh, it's been a long and tiring journey across the Seven Seas from Cambridgeshire to Kersey here. I have me some gold sovereigns to spend. What shall I spend my money on? Oh, hello, sir. Would you like some of my Kersey cloth? Oh, I love some Kersey cloth. <laughs> I'm rich. I've got cloth. <laughs> Woo! It's been treacherous, but I finally made it from Kersey to Bilderston here. I have me some gold sovereigns to spend. But what should I spend it on? Oh, hello, sir. I have some lovely Bilderston blue for you. Oh, I'd love some Bilderston blue. Ah, oh, yay, I'm rich. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I've made the tiring journey to Sudbury on the bank of the river looking for cloth merchants. Oh, I have cloth. We all have cloth. Here, take my firstborn child. <laughs> ah! He can help me weave more cloth! Yay, cloth! <laughs> so as you can see, the wool towns got very rich, very quickly. But what should we spend this money on? Why, God, of course! Oh, bloody hell, that is an upgrade! I mean, I'm so glad that this wool money is going towards me. I mean, the church. <laughs> 
<laughs> my fingers are cold. <laughs> as well as their timber framed houses, the wall towns are very well known for their huge churches. Very holy of Suffolk, you could say. Very silly of Suffolk. Very silly of Suffolk. That's, that's the series title. Examples of these include Hadley. Wow, that is a big church. Kersey. Blimey, that is a big church. Lavenham. Oh God, that's huge! Long Melford. Whoa! What the hell? That is massive! <laughs> oh, father! This prosperity did not last forever, though. Cheap foreign imports replaced Suffolk's. The rich timber buildings only remain here due to there being no money to replace them. Towns like Hadley became very poor very quickly, and poverty often leads to alternative ways of gaining money, in this case, smuggling. Suffolk. Now the poorest and most densely populated part of the country, outside London, became rife with the smuggling trade. <laughs> These men would land goods off the coast and estuaries, having frequent and violent confrontations with the authorities. It's a fascinating tale which needs to be told. Watch this space. I love Hadley. It's a wonderful town. It's so peaceful. Even the name is nice. It's called Place on the Heath. How? It's called Heathley, Harrison. No, it isn't. Yes, it is. No, it isn't. Yes, it is. You're just being a stupid Norman. How dare you? Hadley, originally called Heathley by the Viking settlers, was beginning to be called Hadley due to a misunderstanding between the Vikings and the Norman invaders. It went a little something like this. All right, Norman. My name is not Norman, I am a Norman, you angle peasant. Oh, what lovely weather we're having. Where are we? Why, you're in Heathley, the place on the heath. Lee meaning place, and heath meaning, look at all this lovely heath. But that says Hadley. Oh, it's not Hadley, sir. It's the Danish letter for E and the Danish letter for the th. Heathley. That looks like a d. But it's not, sir. It's Heathley. It's Hadley. With respect, sir, it's Heathley. It says Hadley. It does not. It I'm says sorry. Hadley. Ah! We found this out because Charlie Haylock personally explained it to us. He's an amazing guy. Hadley, like all of Suffolk, went from being absolutely rich to dirt poor by the 1700s. But what's happened since then? There's exciting times in Hadley when a new railway line opened up in 1847. It diverted off the main line near Bentley Station and crossed the A12 at Cable St Mary. A sign for Cable Station can still be seen off the A12. The A12 traffic used to have to stop to let the train go past. Imagine the chaos if that was still the case. It continued on with a station at Raiden, with the station building still there. Between Raiden and Hadley is a beautiful railway walk. The ghost of the line can still clearly be seen as a straight line going across Google Maps. But what is Hadley like now? Well... Nowadays, Hadley is a lovely market town with a stunning high street, which Charlie will now be exploring to see what it has to offer. I love this lovely market town with a stunning high street. <laughs> Welcome to the cultural centre of Hadley, Greg's! This is Greg's with Alfie. Charlie, say something down the mic. Yo. What an amazing town Hadley is. Join us next time as we explore Ipswich. Oh. <laughs> Harrison and Alfie going around exploring East Anglian places. Telling the history of places you know will bring joy to your faces. Essex and Norfolk, you can stuff it. It's Harrison and Alfie, silly Suffolk. Oi, you're eat bar. Ooh, I have cloth. We all have cloth. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we